everyone, this is Anna from Studio ACM and today I'm going to show you how I design and construct a pair of feathered wings on my motorized frame. So here I've got a template I made and you can see I've set out the back plate and the frame on top and moved the frame to the full extension of the wing. I designed it the full extension so that the cover will not keep the frame from extending. Where if you design at anything less than full extension, uh, you could actually keep the frame from moving. You'll notice there are a couple parts to this design. There are the larger feathers here, the flight feathers. And then there's this portion here that you can see broken up. And this is what I'm going to attach my smaller feathers to. The larger feathers are ones that you're almost always going to have to make. In fact, I'm not too sure of a bird other than an ostrich that has feathers this long. This top feather is going to actually be sandwiched around the top metal bar. And to do that, I've actually made a little nylon sleeve that can slide over the bar. I know a lot of people make their feathers out of EVA foam, and in that case, they would make a channel to fit the top metal bar here. Uh, because I make my feathers out of fabric, I need this tube in between so that it can slide right into the feather itself and disguise the metal bar. All the rest of the feathers have zip ties down the middle. I used to do this with aluminum wire. However, that weighs a lot more than the zip ties. And if you're working with a mechanical frame, one of the goals is to keep your cover as lightweight as possible. So zip ties it is. Here you're seeing the inside of my feathers. Yes, it is a lot of hot glue. There will also be a spray glue on top of this and then we'll sandwich the upper layer of faux suede. In this case, I've got a gorgeous burgundy red colored suede. And once I make this sandwich, I will iron it together to activate all this hot glue and then cut out. It leaves an imprint of the edges, which makes it a little easier to see what I'm cutting. I'm not quite to that stage yet, but later today. So after I've got my flight feathers, I need to focus on this portion of the wings. Okay, so the top side of my cover, I've actually made about an inch and a half longer than the center of this board and that is to cover up the extra width that the motor and mechanism takes up. Um, obviously I don't have the motor in place on my board yet but that is the design reason for the extra about inch and a half that I've placed here. I also made a note to myself to add some extra room down here to also cover the width of the motor and the wireless box. So as you're designing your wing frame cover, there are a couple things that you need to keep in mind. Um, you wanna at least make a mock-up of the, uh, two of this section and test it on your wing frame to make sure that nothing keeps the frame from moving the way it should. 
You can test with an old sheet. You can test with a calico or muslin fabric, um, whatever. Just as long as you check for the frame peeking out when it's closed and check for full range of movement when it's all the way open. I want to make another note about the design. You can see this elbow section here. Um, you want to make sure that you come at least six inches out from each joint. Otherwise, when the frame folds up, your uh, frame might peek out from underneath the fabric. And for this, I've created a base which consists of two layers. In my case, I'm using nylon ripstop and I have added some Velcro attachments here, which were the, the rectangles you see there. That will attach to the flight feathers and keep everything in place. Now, you might have noticed that I don't have any Velcro down here. This whole section is going to be left open. This bottom section needs to be left open for the frame to move freely. If you completely enclose it, you run the risk of having the frame um, constrict at these points and then your frame and your motor is not going to be happy with you. I use nylon ripstop as a base because we're working with metal and I don't want it to fray or get damaged later. Plus it's fairly lightweight and very strong. So I will be sewing my fabric feathers to this. And once I have my fabric feathers on, I will sew the two sides up this very top seam to here. If you're working with real feathers and would prefer to glue, then you're going to need something other than nylon ripstop as your base. Uh, nylon ripstop does not like glue. Uh, since it's plastic, it'll pretty much peel right off once it's cool. But as long as you're sewing the feathers on, uh, nylon ripstop is a pretty good material to use. But the underside of my wings is a slightly different story. You'll notice here that I've actually cleaned up the edges with my bias tape and added in some Velcro. This piece is going to Velcro to the underside of the board, holding it in place there. And then there is actually the back um, padding that will cover over the back plate. Okay, so one more thing to mention. Um, this top portion, you'll know, you'll see how it extends about two to three inches above the frame itself, just like the feather does. And in order to keep my wing base from collapsing and falling flat on that, there is a piece of felt hidden, sandwiched in between um, my cover here. And that gives it enough stiffness to hold this curved shape at the top of my wing and disguise the wing frame. So just like some people make their flight feathers out of EVA foam, they might also make this top section out of EVA foam. But still somewhere in there you will probably have fabric to sew your smaller feathers to. So the overall main goal is to keep your wing cover as light as possible, especially if you have the high speed motor, since it is not quite as powerful as the heavy duty motor and make sure that you're getting full coverage of your frame so that you don't have any metal peeking out. 
and breaking the illusion. So I've added spray glue and I'm on to the pressing now that I have both sides together. Now, if you run a quick, quick press over, you will see you get almost an embossed effect. Um, but the goal is to hold it a little bit longer until the hot glue starts to soften and binds the two pieces of fabric, the two sides of fabric together to make your feathers. Then when we're done, we'll follow the embossing lines and cut each of the feathers out. One final note about putting the big feathers together. You do need to attach them together or gravity will make them just flop. The whole purpose of the wings is to defy gravity after all. So we're suspending everything off this top bar, which means you'll need connections all along the edge here and just tacked in a couple places. And this is true whether you're using EVA foam or fabric feathers or whatever. And this is what I mean when I talk about a thread tack. I've just done four stitches back and forth and back again to secure the feathers to each other. But it still gives enough movement so that when it's going up and down, it looks like an individual feather. If you're using EVA foam, you might consider using something like a heavy duty fishing line to be the connection in between the feathers and the top bar. And the final step for my flight feathers will be to add the Velcro connections so that they can connect to the body of the Velcro on the body of the wing. Just make sure that you're doing the right side of each Velcro before you connect it uh, so that your feathers are facing the right direction. So that's it for now. I will have these done in about a week, including painting and attaching all the small feathers. So I'll have you some. I'll have. I'll have something to show you next week.